Welcome to Happy Recruiting, a podcast by Tim Taylor, where we'll take a deep dive into recruitment and talent acquisition. I'm Lisa, heading up the HR team and also your host. And in every episode, you'll get the chance to join me to meet and listen in to some of the brightest people in the industry as they share their stories and insights. So whether you're a citizen recruiter, an HR professional, or someone looking to break into the field, you'll be sure to find valuable knowledge and practical tips to take back to your own recruitment. So welcome to today's episode where we will dive into the never-ending topic of candidate experience. Now, let's see, we have two guests here today, so I'm really, really curious to hear more about you and uh, Carolina. Please go ahead and introduce yourself. Thank you, and I'm so happy to be here today. So I'm uh, working as a talent acquisition and employer branding lead at Apoteket uh, in Sweden, which is the largest pharmaceutical uh, company, um, retail company. So we have stores across all of Sweden and uh, we are recruiting a lot. So there are much to talk about today. And I've been working for Apoteket uh, almost one year now. And we are like uh, redoing everything uh, within talent acquisition and building everything from scratch. So it's uh, like super exciting. Amazing. We'll hear more about that. Thank you so much. Uh, Moving over to Leo. Please introduce yourself. Yeah, super happy to be here. So my name is Leo Bernard. I'm based in Paris. And what do I do is I'm a recruitment trainer. So I go in different companies and I help them to do even better with recruitment. So methods, tools, techniques, framework, mindsets. I used to be a recruiter for eight years in different kind of companies, startups, big group uh, like L'Oréal, for instance, that you may know, like the most famous one. And now my job is basically to help people to, yeah, to enjoy more recruitment and to be more efficient. Hmm. And of course, current experience is central in that aspect. So Hmm. super happy to be here. Nice. Looking forward to hearing more about your volume of hiring and also your experience being an internal recruiter now on the other side. Great. Let's get warmed up with the first question. Uh, Carolina, I will start with uh, with you. Mm. Um, what have you potentially missed when you have applied for jobs as a candidate yourself? Mm, I think there are a lot of things, actually. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear. How much time do you have? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I Well, um, I think one thing that Uh, candidates uh, usually are missing is the information, like the basic information. And uh, with the basic information, I don't need, I don't uh, mean the job res- description because that you will find in the job ad, but more information about the company, how it is to work within the company, what uh, uh, team members you will be working together with, uh, who will be your manager, and things like that. So that's one part. But I also think there are. Um, sometimes or actually quite many times uh, uh, lacking information about the recruitment process because um, the recruitment process can look very different from company to company and uh, if you are a candidate applying for different jobs uh, usually you want to know okay how long will this recruitment process take and what uh, kind of steps will I have to go through and uh, uh, what what is expecting of me as a candidate so um, that that I, th- I think that is uh, like the basic things that you usually are missing. And um, so, I mean, we are go- going to talk about the candidate, candidate experience today and uh, all those kind of things relate to the candidate experience. Mm. So, mm. Absolutely. yeah. So, um, so both the individual aspect, as you mentioned, understanding more about the team, but then also yeah. understanding about the process. How do you think it would improve if someone gets to know more about the team and then so on? How would that improve the experience? Uh, I think today it's very important to know um, what you can expect, expect and also how you will be able to fit in the company. Um, <clears throat> of course, you have usually you have like... Um, uh, some uh, references uh, about the company or you think you know things about the company and you try to picture yourself within the organization. Uh, But what uh, also have an impact on the organization is the people working there. So what kind of culture will you be part of? So that's why I think uh, it's important to also have some uh, insights about uh, the, the people that you will be working with. But 
I also think information about the job is very important. Uh, not just, you know, the basic information that you can read in the job bad, but also more information in detail about the job. What mm-hmm. expect what what does it expect from you and uh, what will you get out of um that specific uh, job? Mm. Great. So there are bo- both individual uh, aspects but also um, perspectives that they will cover the whole like the whole experience as um, uh, employee mm. thank you so much Leo I will ask you the same question if you've applied for jobs as have you experienced anything that you've been missing mm, I think not to repeat what uh, what has been said like the the one to me keyword is like respect. I uh, think like uh, experience is all about how you feel as a candidate so, like uh, and as a customer is the same. And I think in my previous jobs when I applied as a candidate, there's like no respect at all. Like you know, you mm. the transparency is one is one thing is the first is the beginning of everything. But then you arrive in a, in an interview, the person is late. They don't know anything about you. They didn't read your resume. Neither your cover letter. Mm. Uh, the questions are like whether they are boring, like no, not really like thought about or whatever. So end of the day, like you don't feel respected as a candidate, and you don't want to work for a company that don't respect you as a candidate because it will mean that as a as an employee. They won't respect you either. So I say the main keyword to me is this one. It's mostly during the process that this part of respect happens. But yeah, this is to me the, the biggest uh, trigger that I have. And I was like mad at companies because they, they didn't answer. And this is the second mm. thing. It's like most bad ghosting as well. You know, like a lack of answers. Uh, sometimes you have weeks, uh, not one week, but weeks, like multiple weeks without any answers from a company. So you drop out. Uh, because you don't feel respected once again. So this big keyword to me is respect here that is missing. And most of the companies should start with that, mm. then build on super fancy uh, other stuff. But if they and don't I, have respect... I think, I think it's quite interesting because yeah. uh, when you apply for a job and you go through the uh, recruitment process, uh, that is the first time you interact with the, the company. Yeah. Yes. And uh, I mean, the first impression impression lasts uh, and uh, recruiters or hiring managers sometimes seems to uh, forget about that yeah. uh, and uh, yet it's like super important to really take care of the first time you meet someone and uh, that you treat the candidate with respect yeah, 100%. Mm. I like what you both said there you were talking about like the basics of uh, the process and, and, and job and understanding who to work with but also as you mentioned Leo I mean basic things like like respect mm. uh, and it sounds like having that sort of foundation before adding a lot of I don't know tweaks or, or making it all fancy yeah. mm. but making sure that you have that to create the first impression and then um, move from from there <gasps> nice thanks for sharing those those examples um, but also then how do you then make sure um, that the experience that you want to achieve um, when hiring as a company, how do you make sure that that experience is really there? How do you make sure that the experience is as good as you want it to be? Mm. Have to, like, From the hiring mesh- mesh- perspective. Mesh- perspective. <laughs> of course. <laughs> exactly. But, Go ahead, Kim. Uh, <clears throat> I think um, uh, you have to uh, work on the experience on a constant basis. Uh, maybe you have like created your recruitment process and you have the different steps within the process and how you want the candidate to uh, feel when they go through the different steps. But you also have to like come back to that uh, on a regular basis, I think, and evaluate how does your expectation meet the, the candidate um, uh, experience. So I think it's it's important to once in a while uh, actually ask the candidates. Uh, you can have like a survey or whatever kind of tool you decide to use. But uh, I think that is very important But uh, because otherwise you will only have your own perspective. And uh, uh, when you have created something, uh, you usually feel very proud about that. Mm. And yeah. <laughs> you don't like go back and really... Um, uh, try to understand does it meet the the requirements or the goals that you have set up. Uh, so I think it's important to come back once in a while and really try to uh, to see does this uh, process or whatever you have uh, meet the expectations you had from the beginning. Mm. So ask uh, for feedback from candidates. Anything you want yeah. to add uh, to that? Well, this field? is the um, yeah the first thing like to ask feedbacks and mm. like all the time I think even if it's like random discussion. Like uh, in interviews, when you have the person for the first time, why did you apply? How did you feel about this job description? Did you have any information on the website and so on and so forth? That's the first thing. 
Then you have like a second uh, aspect of that is like yourself apply to other companies. Mm -hmm. When I was a recruiter, I, I mean, I was curious to see, okay, what, what else is out there? Not because I wanted a new job, yeah. but to see like the process. Uh, so I was applying almost every month to different jobs just to see like the, the auto reply I've got, for instance, when I apply, just to see if they ask me for an interview. How do they do that? If they say no, you know how is it made and so on and so forth that's the second, uh, second aspect and the third one is also to ask to your friends and family hey in your recruitment process uh, recently uh, what are the things like how, do, how did you feel how, um, how are you treated by the people and also you can scroll on, on LinkedIn for instance to see the experience that people share usually like they, they share a lot of bad experience yeah. so you don't mm. know how to improve that but you start from that and you don't repeat yourself yeah, yeah. so uh, we're looking for feedback um, from uh, candidates looking for other positions in other companies as well, yeah. but also asking for, for friends. Have mm. you ever tried applying to your own roles that you have posted? Yes, we have done that. Yes? Yeah. I, I haven't done it, but uh, we made a, like a fake profile uh, who actually applied for uh, open positions uh, at Apoteket. And uh, we basically took the concept of uh, mystery shopper mm. and created uh, something that we called mystery candidate. Uh -huh. So uh, that uh, candidate was applying for open positions uh, at our competitors but also our own open positions and I think that was really a really good experience uh, both from a recruitment perspective from a talent acquisition perspective but also to get feedback uh, to give feedback to a hiring manager this is how uh, a candidate uh, experience uh, the process when they apply for a, a position at Apoteket and the this is where we can approve mm -hmm. and uh, this is where we can like tweak the uh, a process or a response rate. It's uh, very much about the response rate, I think. Interesting. Mm. It's a mystery mm. uh, candidate. Mystery like candidate, that. yes. Yeah. <laughs> I also did that in all of my previous jobs when mm -hmm. I was working as a recruiter. And today, as my job is to basically train companies, yeah. every time we have a training, I apply to their positions mm -hmm. like a month before the training. Mm -hmm. So then I know like, okay, do I, do I get an answer? Mm -hmm. uh, if it's a yes, how? If it's a no, how? And usually like 50%, uh, I never have an answer. A month after, I still have no news. And I'm like, see, like this is the issue. And they're like, oh, I didn't know uh, who is in charge of that. And because it's, it reveals a lack of organization sometimes. And usually the answer I get is, oh, but yeah, we don't know who is responsible for that. So no one can answer you because we don't know who is in charge. And like, ah, interesting. <laughs> and this is someone like is, hi stuff, someone yeah. is hiring, exactly. but no one knows, <laughs> no one knows who it is. Yeah, I'm like, okay. So you have to wait out of the blue what's happening. So that's a really good thing to do is to apply in the, to your own positions. Mm. Yes, yes. And I think as you mentioned as well, I mean, going back to the details as well, I mean, there, because, I mean, in many recruitment processes, there are a lot of steps as well. Yeah. Mm. So it can be just, as you said, I mean, one is the response time. Yeah. One is reading the templates. What are we actually saying? And so mm. on. So, really but I think it's advice. quite um, uh, interesting to hear that you're saying like 50% of the time yes. you don't even get a response yeah. or reply mm -hmm. on your application. And uh, I mean, what kind of impact does that have on the candidate experience? Not a good one. <laughs> no, they don't want to exactly. apply again. No, no. you and don't want. And they're mad and mm, frustrated. Mm. And also, when you're talking about the lack of competence within the talent market now, uh, then it's like very important to really care about the candidates because if they don't get the job this time maybe you would like to uh, have the opportunity to uh, uh, come back to them and ask for another position or for yeah. them to apply to another open position so not uh, answering 50% of your candidates crazy. exactly mm. that's a good and there's something else that's, that's crazy it's like for you you have like a business which is B2C so mm. your candidates, they're also your clients. Yes. So if mm. they are not happy with the current experience, mm. they won't buy your product and mm. will go to your competitions and that you don't want. No, no. So, it, uh, so I think it's very important to really be um, uh, mindful about uh, the candidates that you have Makes in sense. your process, even though it's not, even though it doesn't match the the profile, uh, they have like the right, I think, because the right to, to get some kind of feedback. Mm. Yeah. Totally agree. Because they have taken the time to actually apply yeah, for your, for your job. The respect that we talked yeah, about initially. Respect, yes, mm -hmm. perfect. Um, another topic then, or uh, still related to candidate experience. So, which stage in the process do you think is hardest uh, to create a good candidate experience in? Leo, what do you think? Um, 
The hardest one is the interview because this is the one thing that people, uh, you know, like remember in the end. Like if you apply to a job, you apply to many as an applicant. So you don't remember like the career page and so on and so forth. Like, I mean, the pretty one and the, and the awful one, you remember them. Mm -hmm. But like the way you are, you are getting like treated uh, during like an hour or an hour and a half or whatever. Sometimes in some companies, like two or three hours of interview, that you remember. And that's why it's super difficult because here you are kind of like, you know, working, uh, you know, in the edge of, uh, of a cliff and you have like on one direction, you have like the the evaluation so you have to make sure this person got the skills you need and then the other types you have the current experience yes. and you have to juggle between these two because if you do too much of evaluation then the experience is not that great because you feel like you're, by, you're, you're on a test you know like at school but if you do too much experience and not enough evaluation uh, you don't know if the person is great or not so this is why it's super difficult to create this current experience during the interview because you are also like this phase of preparing the interview, uh, if it's at the office, like, you know, like welcoming the person, giving them food or drink, whatever. And then you have to be like the best version of yourself as an interviewer when you're in front of candidates. So there's so many details that you can miss. And one bad thing here can be super costly. So that's, I would say, the, the middle of the process, basically. The middle of the process. And many elements that can go wrong, but also yeah, opportunities things, to course, make yeah. an experience. That's make why it's hard. Impression, good. Carolina, what do you think? Do you agree or do you have another part? Uh, I think, uh, of course, the interview or the the um, step where you interact with the candidate in some way and uh, that is like very important of course but I also think the time between the steps uh, because uh, usually we are quite bad of uh, giving the uh, candidate information about uh, what will happen between interview one and uh, interview two for example and that is usually the period where the candidate feel like okay I'm in a black hole now. <laughs> I don't know anything about what will happen now or what will the next step be. So I think uh, using that uh, like quiet period uh, to give uh, inf uh, information to the candidate, and it doesn't have to be a much of information. It could be like, okay, um, we are still in the process of interviewing other candidates uh, or we will get back to you shortly. Um some some kind of uh, information, email, whatever, and it's like super easy to do that because it doesn't take a lot of time. And there are you now, um, it is where you can use uh, the automatic uh, email function, so you don't have to write it by yourself. You can just you know move the candidate or send them uh, um, automatic email. So, but but that makes a lot of lot um, to the candidate experience. Uh, from a candidate perspective, you feel like, oh my God, I get so much information here. Yes. <laughs> yeah. But what you do on the other side is not much. Mm. Mm. So it gives mm. a good impression, even though maybe yeah. the, like mm. the, the work that you need to do, but yeah. it gives mm. good, good experience. That's and of course, the there sometimes you uh, get delay uh, because uh, you have to wait for candidates, for example, or maybe you have to like reschedule interviews and things like that. And <clears throat> I think uh, sometimes we feel like, oh my God, we don't have, to, we don't want to um, in, give the information to the candidate because we we are feeling um, um, uh, bad about ourselves that we don't ha that we don't uh, um, stick to the time schedule. Uh, but from a candidate perspective, it feels like. Okay, it's fine if you just give me information that you are, are running a little bit late or uh, that we will have to like postpone this interview or this mm. meeting. Mm. Mm. Instead of just being quiet. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Mm. I agree. Oh, and I'm, I'm going to add and be maybe yeah. a bit extreme here, but uh -huh. like, to me, like one or two days without the news is way too much. Yeah. Like on a candidate perspective, especially when it's like the company that you love a lot. Like I applied to companies that I loved as a, as a, as a customer and like then the, it was it was on a full experience. And if you have no news, you just say that, that you have no news. And even if it's every two mm, days and like, mm. hey, hi, we mm. still think about yeah. you. We still mm. care about you. We have no news, sorry. The mm. high manager didn't have the time because he's working on his big project, blah, blah, mm. blah, blah, blah. And then you apologize for that. And then as long as you have an answer, you get it. But yeah, to mm. me, like more than two days between news is way too much. That's too long. In a candidate perspective, especially today when everything goes fast. Yes. Mm. You can have like a pizza in 15 minutes. You can have like mm. a date in 15 minutes, but you cannot yes. have a job in 15 minutes. Exactly. Which is a shame. should be like a, you know, in two days you should have like an answer. Yeah. Adaption. And what we have done, we also inform the candidates uh, in... Um, uh, in the first step, when we uh, want to have them in the process, uh, when we have done this first selection, uh, we also inform, inform them about, okay, what are the steps in this process and what will happen? And uh, then when they go to the interview and then when we are done with that and we'll, we'll hopefully go to the next uh, step, we send information to the candidate. These, these are the remaining steps. Mm -hmm. uh, 
Nice. So they feel very informative and know what will happen and also what mm. to expect. Mm. And you mentioned hiring managers uh, mm. here as well as one topic. Um, and in our role sometimes then as uh, recruiters, how do you support and, and educate hiring managers to make sure that you have this consistency in the candidate experience? It Leo, you're, it feels like you want to answer <laughs> this well, one. It's funny that you educate hiring managers. <laughs> yes, you know, yes, like, yes, uh, yes. You're like, like they are little kids. And uh, yeah, I mean, usually like the most of the of the failures occurs because of, of hiring managers, because in most of the companies, like people like, I mean, this is a real job to do a recruitment. And even the recruiters sometimes are not trained, which is one of my battles today. But like the hiring managers, even less. And the thing is, recruiter is your job. So after a while, you know how to do your job. But hiring managers, you have to do your proper job at the same time. So it's like maybe what, 10% to maximum 40, 50% of your job spending in hiring but if you don't know how to do it if you don't have like the skills to do it it's gonna have the, the the you know like the knowledge and the tools well it's impossible so most of the recruitment, recruitment they fail because of that mm -hmm. i have like a, to me like there's like four categories of hiring managers like the the, the the worst one being like you know like the one you don't want to work with like the toxic <laughs> hiring managers like they always destroy your process and like no matter what you do they do the opposites and it gets awful and then the fourth like the, the best one is like the champion so you have to make sure they are the best in in their class and that sometimes they are better than you in one of the companies I've worked with at Choco, I've trained them and uh, make them, you know, like love recruitment. So they were doing better stuff than me. They were better in sales, in pitch. They were better in sourcing. They were better in interviewing. And I was learning from them at a while because I was like, wow, okay. It's if I focus on recruitment, my team is filled with mm. the best individuals. So I'm faster on my projects. So I have a better <coughs> bonus and so on and so forth. So when they realize the impact recruitment have, they are the best. And usually like there is like this war between uh, hiring managers and, and, and recruiters but it shouldn't be the case and just everyone should understand the others so like the recruiter understand that the hiring managers basically they have their own job to do they cannot be you know like 100% uh, available and then the other way around as well that like, it's a real job to hire people you don't have to do mistakes so you can just do like internal trainings as a starter uh, with your hiring managers and give them the knowledge you have uh, learn uh, how to use the tool uh, like if you use like a really good idea is to collaborate in the same platform yes. it's much mm. better than just emails and slacks and yeah. And that so the, the, this is the new level one is like to understand each other. Level two is to train the hiring managers, and then level three you can get uh, way more and teach them how to do the stuff even mm. better. Mm. So a good system helps as well. But yeah. I think as you mentioned there, I really like what you're saying that I mean, accept that they might know things better than you as well. So it's not coming in like yeah. you need to be the expert and, and we're going to here to educate you, but uh, learn from each other. Mm. Carolina, anything you want to add? Yeah, I think um, it's also important for a hiring manager and a talent acquisition partner to know what are your responsibilities and what are minor responsibilities. Mm. And uh, from a talent acquisition perspective, we uh, usually know all the about you should know um, all the steps and uh, what we expect to find in all the steps as, as well. And uh, um, to get the hiring manager on board, uh, I think it's important to um, give the information also to the hiring manager. This is what I will expect from you uh, because you are responsible re responsible for this particular part uh, uh, in, the, in the process. So that is also one way to... Um, uh, get the hiring manager on board. Um, and there, of course, are also the practical training. How do you perform an interview in the best way? And uh, how do you keep the candidate experience uh, during that interview? Uh, so there are many things that you, you can do to get the hiring manager on top. Mm -hmm. yeah. But the expectation part is really good. I mean, mm. like in any type of collaboration, right? This is yeah. what I expect from you, and this is how mm. we can. And also, how, how do you how do you ask your questions? Uh, yes. um, templates for that and mm. guidelines. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> and basically, like the mindset, you know, like uh, your client, your candidate is a client, and yes. yeah. you know, like people, like salespeople, they won't, they will never be late at a meeting with a client. They will never let him wait for like two days or whatever. So you just do the same framework for candidates, and it works. And you can use like the data from it's uh, Virgin Media. They did like a calculation on the costs of bad employer experience, and I won't mm -hmm. go into details, but it's five point point two million pounds per year which is crazy because they compared like the, um, the candidate that have a bad experience as a candidate and the one that was subscribed to Virgin Media. And then they do like a cross pass and most of them, they just drop uh, and they go to Netflix or whatever instead. So because they have a like, bad experience, they tell to their friends, to their family, mm -hmm. and it's 5.2 million pound per, per year, which is crazy. That's so, a lot. Yeah, maybe you can put in the description the link. It's crazy it's experience yeah, and yeah, they yeah. realize that it's really costly. So it is a business topic. Yeah. It it's is. not like, a, it oh, is. wow, it's a candidate care and we are so good people. No, it's 
it's business. It's business, it's money. yeah. Mm, yeah. Mm, absolutely, I totally agree with you. And uh, candidates tend to uh, let the friends know about uh, a bad yes. experience. Yes, <laughs> yes. exactly. Yeah. Uh, sometimes also about the good experience. But uh, I mean, you could just go to yourself. If you have had a bad uh, customer experience, uh, yeah. for example, uh, you tend to tell your friends about that. Don't go and buy that product. Don't go to that store. And I think <clears throat> it's the same with the candidate experience. Don't apply for that company. Yeah. And that will have an impact on your uh, business goals in the end of everything. So uh, it's uh, very important to um, give the managers the uh, possibility uh, to be good hiring managers. So before we were talking about things that you uh, might have missed in uh, your own experiences as candidates, um, but I'd like to turn the question around. Do you have any now examples of uh, things that you've seen that have just been outstanding uh, when it comes to candidate experience? Leo? Yeah. Um, can I ask the AI to answer for me? No. <laughs> yes, um, that's right. Two examples. <laughs> one I put in place in, uh, and one I've seen in a company. Uh, this, the one I've seen, it's a, a French company called Foodles. So uh, they did something with like the candidates that you say no to. Uh, this one that we usually forget, you know, you say no and then they are like, um, I mean, sorry for that, but kind of garbage and you forget about them. So what they put in place is like a newsletter. So like the people they say no to, but they feel that maybe one day they can be interesting candidates. They send a newsletter to them every single month and they manage to hire 100 people in two years with that. So basically like the people that they're already engaged with the company. So instead of saying just no and, you know, like move on and get away, they put them in a newsletter and they hire them. And the example I put in place, uh, it's called like a candidate kit. So basically, let's say between step one and step two, you send like a PowerPoint or whatever, like a PDF file of 10 pages to explain the rest of the process, to give t information about the company. So you, you feed the candidates with a lot of stuff, internal stuff about your company, how it's going to happen, the time of the process, uh, any advices for the candidates. This is really amazing. And just a document you send. So you create it once. It lasts for two hours, maybe, to create this document. And then you use it forever. Mm -hmm. Coming back to what you said before as well, that we want to reduce the waiting time as well. And, and, and yeah. keeping sort of the you engagement. Keep them happy, uh, you're busy. Yeah. Yeah. And also, also to provide the candidate with uh, new information between yeah. every step. Uh, and it doesn't have to be much it could just be something that is new uh, about the job or the company or the benefits, for example, things like that. Yeah. Mm. I really like it. And also, I, I've heard somewhere about like uh, talking about candidates that didn't get the job as like a uh, silver medalist and, and, and bronze yeah, medalist and, and sort of keeping that yeah. uh, still the importance and, yeah. and, and that you can sort of reuse uh, the talent. So really nice, nice examples. Um, Carolina, so now we've talked a lot about uh, different initiatives and candidate experience. You mentioned some examples and so on. But how do you measure it? How do you know how, how you, well you're doing? Um, <clears throat> I mean, one way to measure it is to uh, use the candidate experience net promoter um, Code. Score. Score. Yeah. Score, thank you. Uh, CNPS. Uh, so that's one way, and that's a very easy way to do it. But uh, I think you can actually challenge you a little bit more uh, when it comes to measure your candidate, ex candidate, candidate experience. And uh, there are tools and companies that provide that kind of solution. And uh, what you do is actually that you implement it in your recruitment process. And when a candidate uh, will be rejected, uh, you can also send out this survey kind of thing. Uh, so that is one way to do it. And I think it's important to really understand how a candidate um, uh, experience the process and uh, how that score relate to your uh, internal score, your K mm -hmm. uh, KPIs. Mm -hmm. So that's one way to do to do it. And uh, I do recommend yeah. everyone working with recruitment to do that. Otherwise, you will not be able to know if you are on track or off track. Anything you want to add on that, Leo? Measurement. Yeah, I mean, like an example of, of how it's working, like when I, in the previous company I worked for, I, I was using Team Taylor as an ATS and there was like this NPS feature in it. And I answered like a candidate to say no. So it was like, no, I mean, you won't join the company. So the guy got a no. So he knew it was done. And then in the feedback on top of the, of the notes, that was a nine, uh, which was a really good score for NPS. He added like a comment, be like, you know, I'm sad. Thank you for answering. But maybe you missed something. So I want to add this, 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 and this. So it, it's not the main, the main tool. I mean, the tool is not made for that. But he used that as like a backup. And then we're like, hmm, you know what? Maybe I should put back in in the process. So I give him a second chance, and the guy got hired. 
So by asking, by measuring the current experience, you can also maybe sometimes save lives. And you know, I've, I've got people that uh, join exactly. your company as candidates, yeah. so it's and, working. And that wasn't the purpose of asking. You just wanted to have no, feedback yeah, on the process. And, and wow. the guy was so convincing that yeah. I jumped him back in the process. Yeah, that's a nice example. Yeah. So I've had so much fun with you today and time does fly when you are having fun. So we are now approaching the end um, of our uh, podcast. Uh, but before we do that, uh, Carolina, I would just like to ask you of uh, your top uh, takeaways or, or, or tips from uh, today's discussion. Um, I think uh, one thing that I will uh, recommend or uh, hand as, as a tip uh, for recruiters out there is to... Um, Make it easy. Uh, you can make a huge change of doing small things for the candidate experience. And it's very easy to go from a good experience, uh, for, actually from a bad experience to a good experience by uh, giving information to the candidate during the process. So don't forget that. Uh, small steps for, can make a huge change. Mm. Small steps, definitely. Thank you so much. Uh, and Leo, what are your uh, top takeaways or, or tips uh, from the discussion that we've had here today? Mm, if I have maybe one easy stuff to put in place, you, know, you put a piece of paper and you write every single step of a process, every single what I call the touch points. So like a relation between like a company and a candidate. You map it up and then you're like, okay, am I satisfied of this part and this one and this one and so on and so forth? So you make, I don't know, maybe it's like 10, 20, 30 uh, touch points. And in the end, you improve the one that you think are the worst one. So you start from there and then in the end, you have improved every single part of the process. Mm. So breaking it down into Yeah, breaking into it down into little pieces mm. and then you change every piece at a time. Mm. Thank you. And thank you both so much for joining uh, here today. I've learned a lot from your insights and, and, and tips. Um, so thank you for, for being here. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Um, and also, I would like to take the opportunity to thank all of our listeners for, for attending. So, uh, see you next time. That wraps up today's episode of Happy Recruiting. We hope that you enjoyed our conversation and found some valuable insights to take back to your own recruiting efforts. So, until next time, stay positive, stay inspired, and happy recruiting.